In this lesson, we're going to remove duplicate rows from SQL Server. So after this tutorial, you'll be able to understand the various ways of removing duplicate rows in SQL Server. You'll also understand the risks of using group by to remove duplicates. We'll show you how to find duplicate rows and what causes duplicate records to appear in SQL Server. So what causes duplicates? We might not have primary keys on tables. This would allow us to insert duplicates, or there might not be any constraints within tables, which would also allow us to do this. Application problems, which is largely out of our hands, but we can also prevent this with primary keys if we wanted. So we might have a archive table and our live table, and we might want to import everything from our archive table into our live table. And to to import those, we might have to take off any constraints that we have. This might be a task that we've been assigned. So we might have to import everything in, then run a script to remove any duplicates in there. So this does happen. Let's also understand that duplicates happens more than you would think and more than we would like. So understand how to remove them and how to remove them correctly. And that's what the rest of this tutorial will show. So creating duplicate records, we're going to create one table in there is going to be an employee, employee ID and name column. Two duplicate records will be inserted for us to remove. This will be employee ID two and five. Our syntax is shown on the right using the create table and insert into. And it will provide us with these results showing ID two and ID five as our duplicate records. Let's also remember we could prevent these with a primary key. I'll also show you how it's easy enough to add a primary key to prevent this happening. So here we are with our script. We've got a create table. We've got our insert into, and I'm going to run this. And it will insert the rows for which we can then query and show ID 2 and ID 5 are duplicate records. Now, I'll quickly drop that and just show you how easy it is. To add a primary key and prevent those duplicates from happening. So if I run this, create my table and insert into we have a violation of primary key constraint. And highlighted down here, we cannot insert a duplicate key into TBL staff list. The duplicate key is two, which is our ID. If we remove that, we'd have the same error, but for ID five. So let's run that again without our primary key, so I can show you the rest of the tutorial. Let's drop that. And there is our table. So how do we find our duplicate records? We can use having to find duplicate records, which would be syntax like this. Or we can use the CTE, which is my preferred way of doing that, which would be syntax like that. Now the having clause would group by employee ID and name, and it would just say how many of these records have a count greater than one, whereas row number function is going to assign an ID number to each record within employee ID and it's just going to show us where there's more than one. So let's have a look how that works. Here are our two queries here. We've got the having clause. This would show us employee ID 2 and 5 showing us the duplicates. And we've also got CTE which is going to show us row numbers greater than 1. This also shows us that we've got two duplicates. Fantastic. So now for the important part, how do we, how are we going to remove these duplicate rows? We can use row number. This will show us a unique value between each row, and we can remove on this unique value that row number is providing us with. As shown before, here's the syntax. Let's show you how that works. 
So here we have our query, which we used before, which, although this time I've changed my select down here, just to show you what the query is. It's gonna assign us row numbers. So it's gonna remove row numbers two and two. So I'm gonna run that, two rows removed. I can now query TBL staff list and we have the exact number of rows that we need without removing two and five. It's only removed our duplicates. Now, there's a few risks to removing duplicates. We could remove the two rows that we need instead of just the one. This could be awful. So it does happen accidentally when using group by and having because group by and the having clause is just providing us with the ID. So if it's showing us ID two is going to be removed and we ask it to remove ID two, it's going to remove two rows. So you need a unique field. Row number provides us with this. The group by syntax shows us the ID, so it will delete both rows. It's important to remember that. Here's the syntax that we shouldn't use, but I'll show you an example of how that works just so you can understand why we shouldn't use it. So I'm going to start the insert again because we've just previously cleared out IDs two and five. So I'm going to run this query again. We've still got our duplicates and I'll show you our query here, which is our having. I'm going to run that. We can see we want to remove IDs two and five. It's removed four rows. So if we query TBL, TBL staff list, we've lost IDs two and five. So always be careful how you remove duplicate rows. Always where you can, try and use a CTE.